Today on Newswatch, debt default, more money problems for Greece will break down what's ahead for the nation. Plus, up in flames, another black church in South Carolina deals with a fire here, whether officials are calling it a hate crime. I just got a hold to my heart and said, I have something that I want you to do. He was running a major corporation, but he left his position and even gave away his truck to a stranger. We'll explain why. Thanks so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Greece slipped deeper into a financial abyss after defaulting on a loan from the International Monetary Fund. Now it's a question of will Greece remain in the Eurozone? But there does appear to be a ray of hope. Dale Hurd has the story. Panic-stricken Greeks mobbed banks that opened today especially for pensioners who don't have bank cards to allow them some access to their money. This woman says the situation is miserable. It's going from bad to worse. We don't know what is waiting for us tomorrow. This man says it's a catastrophe. I made money. I sent my children to the best schools, and today they're starving. After Greece made a last-ditch effort to extend its bailout, Eurozone finance ministers decided late Tuesday that there was no way they could reach a deal before the deadline. Greece became the first developed country to default on a loan from the International Monetary Fund. All around the European Union, nations are holding their breath, hoping this does not become what the Bank of Greece warned could be an uncontrollable crisis. It's very painful for the Greek people, and it can have a significant effect on growth rates in Europe. And if Europe's not growing uh, the way it needs to grow, uh, that has an impact on us. But now the Financial Times has obtained a leaked letter from Greece's government to Eurozone officials that appeared to show that Athens is ready to concede to creditor demands over new bailout terms. Eurozone finance ministers were preparing to hold a conference call. A referendum had been scheduled for Sunday over whether Greece will stay in the European Union. But in another surprise move, the government hinted that it might be open to calling off the popular vote. European officials and Greek opposition parties have been adamant that a no vote on Sunday will mean Greece will leave the euro, and possibly even the EU. But for ordinary Greeks, whether their country goes or stays, the worst has already happened. This taxi driver says, things remain the same, it's just chaos. I think things will get better. I personally will vote no in the referendum because either way I'm ruined. It can't get any worse for me. Dale Hurd, CBN News. It's an historic day for Cuba and the U.S. Today, the Obama administration announcing the opening of embassies in Washington and Havana. This move restores diplomatic ties that were severed more than 50 years ago. The head of U.N.'s International Atomic Energy Agency is meeting with Iran's president in Tehran today. He wants to talk about Iran's refusal to allow inspectors to question their nuclear scientists. That's a key part of the nuclear talks that are in progress right now. But ultimately, this is going to be up to the Iranians to determine whether or not they meet the requirements that the international community has set forth. The deal would remove sanctions from Iran if the regime agrees to allow nuclear inspections. Negotiations over Iran's nuclear program have been extended until July 7th. Islamic State militants in Egypt are claiming responsibility for the wave of deadly attacks in Sinai. On Tuesday, at least 50 people were killed when a suicide bombing targeted an army checkpoint. The intensity of the attack underscores the tenacity and the resources available to the Islamic State. Militants have battled security forces in northern Sinai, but stepped up their insurgency over the past two years. A group calling itself a branch of ISIS has threatened Arab Christians in Jerusalem with death if they don't leave the city. The group handed out leaflets in Arab neighborhoods calling on Muslims to identify, quote, those who collaborate with the Zionists and to give their addresses. The flyer said if the Christians aren't gone by the end of Ramadan, Christians will be slaughtered like sheep. Israeli police were not aware of the threats until a few days ago. The Supreme Court ruling legalizing same-sex marriage is causing controversies at the state level. In Mississippi, at least one county clerk has resigned. She says being forced to give marriage licenses to gay couples violates her religious rights. In Texas, the state attorney general has told clerks they don't have to issue the licenses if they have a religious objection. 
Clerks in several counties have already referred same-sex marriage applicants to other clerks. But LGBT activists say even clerks with religious objections should be forced to issue the licenses. If a public employee is not willing to do the job for which they were hired, then perhaps they need to find another job. We want to accommodate our employees' religious beliefs, and we are doing that in this office. Meanwhile, pastors around the country are trying to figure out what to do if homosexuals ask to be married in their churches. One large church, church in San Jose, California, has temporarily suspended all weddings. I am not a, a religious bigot. I've been called worse. Uh, I'm a Bible-believing person, and I would hope people would respect Dick Brunel believes the Bible, and I'm not going to violate his beliefs. Pastor Dick Bernal says some members of his church are gay, but he will not perform gay marriages. Other churches and denominations have already taken steps to embrace homosexuality. The Episcopal Church voting today on allowing religious weddings for same-sex couples. Senior Obama administration officials knew back in 2009 that Hillary Clinton was using a private email account while Secretary of State. Even the White House chief of staff knew, but it's still not clear when officials found out Clinton had set up a private email server in her home in violation of government policy. Last night, the State Department released 3,000 pages of Clinton's emails. They show she sent or received a dozen messages in 2009 on her private server that were classified as confidential because they contained sensitive intelligence information. A federal report, report blames Ferguson police for much of the unrest that erupted in the streets of Missouri City last summer. Police are accused of antagonizing crowds and violating free speech rights. The Associated Press reports that officers were cited for, quote, vague and arbitrary orders to keep protesters moving. And those orders went against their rights of assembly and free speech. The study is part of a larger review of how police responded in the first 16 days after an officer shot and killed 18-year-old Michael Brown back in August. Members of a prominent black church in South Carolina are cleaning up and looking for answers after a fire last night. Take a look at this video from WIOS television. It shows crews fighting flames at Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church in Greeleyville. This is not the first fire for the congregation. Back in 1995, the church was burned to the ground by the Ku Klux Klan. Officials aren't sure how the fire started and say lightning may have been the cause. Federal authorities say the fire does not appear to be related to the other recent fires at predominantly black churches. Sometimes getting to the emergency room quickly means the difference between life and death. That's why people in rural areas are worried about their small town hospitals closing. As Lori Johnson shows us, they're not taking the news sitting down. Portia Gibbs died while waiting to be airlifted to a big city hospital 80 miles away. Just six days earlier, her nearby rural hospital in Belhaven, North Carolina, closed. A 48-year-old mother of two who spent the last hour of her life in the back of an ambulance in a high school parking lot. Bellhaven's mayor led this walk for rural hospitals from his small town to Washington, D.C., advocating the need for increased funding. It's a 283-mile walk, one mile for every rural hospital that may be closed by the end of this year, leaving millions of folks who live in the country more vulnerable than ever before. The small but determined band of walkers from 11 states battled weather, traffic, and insects to try to save rural hospitals on the chopping block. You know, as a Christian, as someone that, 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 is, that uh, believes in, in a God that, that loves life and loves justice, then, you know, this is, is a fundamental core issue to, to, to faith and to, to all people's faith. Anybody that values life and wants to live in a world where, where people are treated with dignity. There are a number of reasons more rural hospitals are losing money, such as increased operating costs and declining reimbursements. Everybody in this country needs to be praying for these rural hospitals because if these rural hospitals close, there's going to be an incredible death toll. If you take just 10 needless deaths per these 283 hospitals, that's equivalent to a 9-11 happening every year. The closure of rural hospitals isn't just a health care crisis, it's also an economic one for small towns that are already feeling the pinch. It's estimated the closures will force 36,000 people out of a job, 
translating into a loss of $10.6 billion in the gross domestic product. The walk for rural hospitals, we shall not be moved. After two weeks, the Walk for Rural Hospitals concluded with a rally on the steps of the U.S. Capitol. Well, I think all of us need to reach out to our congressmen and our senators and let them know that rural hospitals are closing. It's, it's not a good idea. It needs to be stopped. Supporters are working with lawmakers on a bill called Save Our Rural Hospitals. Lori Johnson, CBN News. America is no longer a melting pot, at least according to the University of Wisconsin in Stevens Point. In fact, the phrase melting pot is being labeled as a racial microaggression. The collegefix.com reports some other banned phrases from the university's list include, where are you from? I believe the most qualified person should get the job and everyone can succeed in this society if they work hard enough. Those phrases are now considered to be racial aggression because they could be misconstrued by immigrants or other people of other ethnicities. The University of California has created a similar list. Coming up, he went all in and started a movement. What would the world look like if other Christians did what Mike Phillips did? About 80% of Americans call themselves Christians, yet how many of them live up to that claim? Earlier this year, our John Jessup met with a man on a mission, launching a Good Friday call to Christian service. But that was just one moment in a growing movement to encourage people to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk of Christianity. Mike Phillips is a loving husband and a devoted dad. And not long ago, he was also a successful businessman the chief operating officer of one of Louisiana's fastest growing high-tech firms. Then he took a leap of faith. God began to affirm me. He had me give my truck away to a stranger in a Donut Star parking lot. I was just going through life, um, doing the best I could. And then um, God just got a hold to my heart and said, I have something that I want you to do. With no income, financial support, or formal Bible training, he launched a Christian ministry challenging believers to fully walk with Christ, a mission that tested his own faith. He let me know, oh, you're not all in. There's an area of your life that you have withheld from me. I was trusting in the provision he had given me instead of trusting in him as my provider. And those closest to him. It's one thing to be the person that God gave this vision to, and it's another thing to be that person's spouse. I thought I was faithful before, but now I know what it really means to be faithful. Mike's wife, Cherie, says they knew early on their lives wouldn't follow an ordinary track. Even on those tough days, you think about, we knew way back then that there was something else. Mike cashed in all of his company's stocks to fund his calling. He even gave away his truck to someone who needed it more all to reflect his renewed commitment. He believes if America's 230 million self-identifying Christians did their part, it would lead to national revival. Born and raised in the Bayou State, Mike Phillips is launching his all-in campaign from right here in Louisiana to mobilize Christians around the country to show the love of Jesus Christ to others. And he's tying it to a date on the calendar that he believes shows the ultimate example of love. What better way to introduce the country to an authentic Christian movement than by challenging them on Good Friday, the day that Christ served us, uh, to serve others and love others. And so we're just challenging Christians um, to get up that day and to find someone to love and to serve. It could be buying a cup of coffee. It could be um, going and searching for somebody whose car is broken down on the side of the road. He says there's no act too big sense. or small. And when they're asked why, why are you doing this? Why are you serving? What are you doing? Um, the answer is simple. It's because I'm all in. I'm an authentic Christian and I'm serving because Jesus Christ served me. Things are starting to take shape. He's developed an app so Christians can share what they've done, upload videos, and keep track of their service. Several well-known athletes, performers, and government leaders back the campaign. What intrigued me about this is that sometimes Christians are known for what we're against. We're not known as much for what we're for. And when this concept came of, of doing good on Good Friday, I thought, what a great way to do something positive, uplifting, that actually helps people, does something charitable and kind. Uh, we need more of that. 
who's with me. Mike's main message, Authentic Christianity, is about making a difference in people's lives. When you're fully committed to Jesus Christ, He changes your heart and you can't help but love others. It becomes your purpose. It becomes what you're about. Um, but we don't see that going on. We see people living uh, selfishly. And church leaders agree. You look at the divorce rate, you look at people quitting their jobs, dropping out of school, uh, people, they give up. They're not living all in. They're not fully committed to what they do. And the people who are fully committed, many of them are committed to the wrong things. Mike believes this all-in movement will change people's perception about Christianity. We'll be uh, white and black and, and old and young and Democrat and Republican, and we'll span every Christian denomination, and we won't agree on every issue. Um, but we're held together by a common set of values and a single purpose, and that's to show the love of God to other people. Everybody have good day. John Jessup, CBN News, New Orleans, Louisiana. Up next, we're hearing from cast members of the new movie, Faith of Our Fathers, why they say this is a film you don't want to miss. It's been 50 years since the Vietnam War, and now a new movie is honoring the veterans of that conflict and showing the legacy that the love of a father can have for a son, even if the father was a casualty of war. Charlie Nairin has more. Thanks, Ephraim. That film is called Faith of Our Fathers, and it hits theaters July 1st. And joining me now to talk about the movie are two actors, Cy Robertson from the hit show Duck Dynasty and Oscar award-winning actor Stephen Baldwin. Let's start with you, Stephen. Faith of Our Fathers tugs on many heartstrings, military service, the aftermath of the Vietnam War, and a father's love. What drew you to this film? Well, uh, when I first read the script, uh, for me it was mostly just the journey of these sons who had these letters that they received. Some of those letters they never even read because it was too painful or, you know, whatever. Uh, so for me, it was the journey of the two sons. They come together, they meet each other and decide to go on a cross country journey to Washington DC to the Vietnam War Memorial, the wall that has the 58,000 names on it. And it was the motivation of that unanswered question that lack of closure in the lives of these two sons about knowing who they, their dads were, what happened to them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that was very compelling to me. Uh, the fact that in the Vietnam battle sequences and in the flashbacks, the clear communication of the gospel uh, was awesome uh, and is, is, is an amazing element that exists in Faith of Our Fathers. And lastly, uh, and equally as important is uh, it is, we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of the Vietnam War, and it's a wonderful reality for us to use Faith of Our Fathers as an opportunity to honor our veterans and give them the, 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 the respect that they're due. Indeed. And Sai, you are a Vietnam veteran yourself. What was your reaction when approached to do this movie? When they asked me to be in Faith of Our Fathers, I, I was actually honored, okay? And, uh, like, you know, it, it's a, a love story, okay? About, you know, a father's love for his sons, okay? It's about combat veterans' love for each other, okay? Because, look, that's the only protection they got is each other, okay, in wartime, okay? It's about the guys around them. Okay, and the relationship they have. Okay, so this whole movie is based on a father's love and the relationship of everyone concerned. Okay, so it's it's all plus it honors our veterans. Amen. That's what it's all about. Well, Stephen, you've actually worked with the team behind the movie, the Downs Brothers, as well as David A. R. Wright. Uh, White, what have your experiences with these filmmakers been that brought you back for more? Kevin and Bobby Downs, uh, they had a, a company for forever called ChristianCinema.com. It's been doing really wonderful in communicating the gospel and getting uh, Christian content out all over the world. Uh, Dave White's an actor. Uh, Kevin and Dave and I and Bobby worked on a movie over 10 years ago called The Sixth, The Mark Unleashed, uh, which is a very popular title now here in the States uh, as far as uh, uh, Christian movies go. Uh, and I was talking to Kevin recently, and Kevin has gone on since then to uh, 
star in the movie Courageous with Alex Kendrick, which was a big hit. Uh, Dave White is one of the owners of Pure Flix, which uh, produced God's Not Dead, and Dave participated in that film. A and it's funny because these guys are really humble guys that are quite surprised now that they're seeing all the success and that God's blessing these opportunities. I had to turn to Kevin Downs the other day and say, hey, Kev, you're one of the pioneers in this Christian movie business here in the United States. I said, I'm not surprised God's blessing what you're doing. You've been doing it a long time. So it's, it's just a thrill for me to be working with them again. Cy Robertson and Stephen Baldwin, thanks for being with us. Our pleasure. Thank you. Back to you, Ephraim. Thank you, Charlene. Another good one from Pure Flix Films. Remember, the film comes out today. Make sure you check it out. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back to CBN News Watch. Finally, this hour, a word of encouragement for you this Wednesday. We call it your Wednesday word. Hope it does motivate you. Be careful. Today's word, rather, is motivation. Be careful what motivates you to do good for others. It is never about you. Think on this. In all you do, be sure the glory and honor point to God and not yourself. He is due all the honor. It reminds me of what my grandmother often says to me even today. Only what you do for Christ will last. With that, make this a wonderful Wednesday. That's going to do it now for CBN News Watch. Remember, you can always get more of our exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. We'd love to hear what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do that on Facebook or at CBN News on Twitter. We hope you'll join us again right here next time. It is Wednesday. Make it a wonderful day, everybody. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.